over a decade, Herb Dean has been considered one of MMA's best referees. With everyone from Dana White to Joe Rogan considering him the gold standard of officiating. Everything, however, has a shelf life. And today we look at some recent mishaps that helped take the shine off of MMA's greatest third man. Welcome to the INC. And these are five of the worst Herb Dean moments. Between 2010 and 2014, Dean was voted the sport's best referee by the World MMA Awards. The following incident helped end his streak. At UFC 194, Chris Weidman defended his middleweight title against former Strikeforce champion Luke Rockhold. The fight started competitive through the first two rounds, until Weidman botched a spinning back kick that allowed Rockhold to score a takedown and eventually move to full mount. For over a minute, Rockhold pounded away on Weidman, but despite the champion making little attempt to improve position, Dean refused to stop the fight. What does it take to stop a fight? Wow, that easily could have been stopped. Rockhold would finish a bloodied Weidman after another prolonged beating in the fourth round. The MMA community unanimous in their belief the fight should have been stopped far sooner. Dean faced criticism for a similar incident three years later, when he allowed C.B. Dalloway to take prolonged damage during a match with Khalid Murtazaliev at Fight Night Moscow. Dean only waving off the bout when Dalloway was unable to get up from his stool at the end of the second round. Weidman would go on to lose four of his next five fights, with many believing the damage sustained in the Rockhold fight had a long-term impact on his career. Dean found himself at the center of one of the most contentious fights in 2020. At UFC Fight Island, Francisco Trinaldo welcomed Jai Herbert to the UFC in a lightweight contest. The former Cage Warriors champion showed why he entered the promotion with such fanfare, dropping Trinaldo in the second and seemingly on the verge of a statement win over his veteran opponent. Until Trinaldo chose to roll back the years early in the final round. The fight marked Trinaldo's first knockout win since 2018. The 42-year-old still showing he belonged with the elite with a spectacular walk-off finish. At least, that's what should have happened. It's not over. Come on! It's not over. Stop the fight! That's the second time now, Trinaldo gets the win by knockout against the run of play. Dean's decision to let the fight continue incensed commentators Dan Hardy and Paul Felder. Their tempers fueled by Dean's refusal to stop a match between Tanner Bozer and Rafael Pessoa earlier that night. Hardy chose to confront Dean shortly after the match, sparking a feud between the two on social media over the next several weeks, and was later cited as a reason for the UFC's decision to axe Hardy in February of 2021. When, when he released the video afterwards, which was very kind of nonchalant and like, well, I'm the gold standard of referee, and so, you know, if you're going to put your Superman t-shirt on, etc., etc., that concerned me, because that means that he's not learning from that mistake and he's going to continue making that mistake. And, uh, you know, if I'm a fighter and I make a mistake, I've got to learn from that mistake or I'm going to get knocked out or submitted in the same way. Unfortunately, the referees go on and, and I don't know whether they're held accountable or not, and that's the issue. Dean's decision-making even led him to be accused of sexism. On the whole, Dean allows fighters ample opportunity to improve a dangerous position, but is far less willing to do so when officiating matches involving women. One such example came in 2014, when Ronda Rousey took on Sarah McMahon for the UFC bantamweight title. During an early clinch exchange, Rousey threw a knee to McMahon's liver that caused the wrestler to drop to her knees. Dean jumping in just as McMahon, fresh-faced and stunned by the decision, returned to her feet. While UFC President Dana White defended the decision, the fight marked the first sign of Dean's double standards with women's matches, especially as the referee had overseen Mike Pyle's prolonged beatdown of TJ Waldberger earlier in the night. Oh, this fight's over. This yep. fight's over. Herb Dean should stop this fight. The question resurfaced in 2019 when Jermaine Durandamy faced Aspen Ladd in the main event of Fight Night Sacramento. The fight was billed as a classic striker versus grappler affair, one that would end in spectacular, and some believe, premature fashion. Just like that, Jermaine Durandamy! That is it! 
Ladd's team immediately filed a protest with the California State Athletic Commission, arguing Dean stopped the fight prematurely due to a subconscious gender bias. The CSAC voting three votes to two to uphold the loss. Shit happens, guys. Sorry, I'll be back better. Dean's mistakes aren't limited to the UFC. In 2015, Georgie Karhanian took on Bubba Jenkins in the co-main event of Bellator 132. Jenkins entered the fight having amassed an 8-1 record, while Karhanian was returning to the promotion after winning the featherweight title with the World Series of Fighting. The trend of the fight was set immediately, with Jenkins attempting multiple takedowns and Karhanian looking to time the NCAA champion with a guillotine attempt. Kahanian managed to lock the choke in in the second minute of the first, with commentators, fans, and even the fighter himself realizing Jenkins was out. Unfortunately, Herb Dean was the last to know. Bellator boss Scott Coker initially defended Dean's decision making after the fight but later admitted the moments after the fight were scary for all involved. Dean himself would suffer a similar incident a few months later when he was late to spot Chaz Skelly's submission of Max Blanco at Fight Night Hidalgo. Karahanian and Jenkins would eventually rematch at Bellator 160, the Armenian ending the rivalry in fast and even more decisive fashion. Oh, Conor McGregor's match with Habib Nurmagomedov remains the biggest fight in MMA history. And while Habib would win the fight in the fourth round, many believed he was fighting not one, but two opponents that night. McGregor used every trick in the book to upend his Russian opponent, landing multiple punches and knees to the back of Habib's head and grabbing the cage with his toes. Some reports later suggested McGregor committed over 30 fouls in the 18 minutes of action, none of which were reprimanded by Dean. McGregor continued pushing the rules by tugging Habib's shorts and grabbing the inside of his glove in the third round, the latter of which leading Habib to question the official on his lack of interference. Although commentators Joe Rogan and Dominic Cruz remained divided on how severe McGregor's rule breaking was. Well, Connor was grabbing his glove, which is illegal. The hooking of the glove is yes. illegal. The veteran move. <laughs> Khabib's win and the subsequent post-fight brawl meant Dean's officiating was mostly overlooked. But it didn't stop Habib questioning the official's performance when the two men met in 2019. How much do you think? What do you think? I don't know. How much you can get paid, Herb? How much? Okay, well, I was trying to do a good job. In my opinion. I hope. That's what I was Were you all compensated, though? No, that's the thing. I'm not. <laughs> right. oh, I forgive him. Okay, you forgive him? Do you forgive him? You're forgiven. He's forgiven. Okay. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Dean's indecisiveness at UFC 257 forced Marina Rodriguez to beat Amanda Rebus twice in two minutes. That's why he must be the Dean hasn't stopped the fight. Rodriguez believes she has. That's the fight. Interpreting Sabah Hamasi's slip as a knockdown in his 2017 loss to Abdul Al Hassan. His pro MMA fight career. This is the INC. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.